G'day fellas and welcome back for another Fido Daily and today we'll be focusing on Azir. Now Azir has been subject of a couple of uh, pro-aimed 14.8 um, nerfs with uh, grass build, grass tank build taking a bit of a hit with the flat damage uh, shaved off W and then obviously the health regen went down. So I do think the most optimal way to play Azir right now is as a glass cannon. All right, I think we're back to the Conqueror page and I will show you exactly why in this video. Now we're playing Azir vs Zed, um, just running the standard sort of Conqueror page, uh, Scorch Butterfly for lane, scaling HP, and uh, looking for a lot of all-in angles, right? Well, when you have Conqueror, I feel like it's a very easy way to play Azir because basically your goal um, in lane and also in team fights is just to stack up your Conqueror first before you dash in, and then your your dash in does a lot of damage because you've got that bonus AP, and then potentially when you ult people, you get a massive heal as well, right? If you ult after getting 12 stacks, and against Zed, your goal is just to look at your creeps. All right, you got to keep an eye on your creeps that are dying and every time one of your creeps is low you walk forward and you get one auto guys just one all right make sure you get the one auto you get your scorch you get your mana flow immediately back away because unlike other champions uh with us yeah as soon as you auto someone once with your w you take the entire wave worth of aggro uh, you can see here for example i go for an extended trade instead of following that concept of one auto q or one auto uh, from from just the w um instead of taking free damage i actually opt into an extended trade and guess what look at the armor 35 armor on Z, 26 armor on you. So whenever you are both tanking the wave, uh, you're in a lot of trouble, right? You, you're just always going to be worse for wear uh, because he has more armor, more base armor. Uh, but if you do hit level 3 first, that is your that is your condition, guys. Once you hit level 3 on Azir against Assassins, you can go immediately and shuffle in with Conqueror. You can immediately shuffle in because your WEQ gives you so many Conqueror stacks straight away, and you can absolutely just stand still, uh, put another W down, and just stand your ground and actually win against most Assassins. This game, I'm also running Exhaust to kind of facilitate that idea to, to uh, play towards the same goal and uh as he's actually one of the best champs to harass under tower against melees just make sure that you have a ward to lean on you know here i've got a perfect ward great uh we don't feel uh, unsafe about getting ganked make sure you never use your e right to trade always hold your e just in case you will get ganked um and outside of that just Try to time your W with the creep dying. This is probably the biggest mistake that people make on Azir. They press the W too early and they forget that, look, uh, the W times out twice as fast when it's under tower. And if you prep the W too early, it might actually time out before he has to walk up. Or you won't be able to you know, use it to harass two dying minions. It's only going to be the first one. And then by the time the second one dies, your W is already out of there. So uh, pretty much every time you can get a couple of autos before dashing in, you just always go for the dash, guys. Because your dash does so much damage if you get a few conqueror stacks beforehand um just making sure that you're patient with it right don't dash straight away dash at the very last second and uh here we know that zed's one hp so we're just kind of trying to involve that viega in the play we saw viega was halfway he was at scuttle so he could have chosen to gank bot lane or gank mid um now, obviously, we know that Zed has no flash, but he does have a shadow, so we should be patient here, guys. Remember that the longer you're in this position, the more CS Zed's going to lose, because if he uses his shadow on the wave, we're just going to immediately dash on him. So he has to use his shadow on us. Now, here it's important that you don't rush it. Do not rush it, because there's a chance if you try to go in too quickly, he might be able to swap places and go back to his shadow there, right? He might be able to go back to his shadow as you're dashing in, and that's pretty much the only way you don't get that kill. And uh, look, it doesn't really matter if you die here. Like, dying here is not a big deal. If I die one for one i wouldn't mind it too much because look at the wave this whole time he's losing cs and losing cs and now he's down a full level so it's totally fine for our game now we kind of lost track of zenzao didn't realize that zenzao could catch up to us there um so that was a little bit of an unfortunate death but we always needed to go back to base anyway so it doesn't really change our game it does give zenzao some gold but for us it's actually quite good to die there um if you do get cancelled like that, obviously we spent 8 seconds trying to recall, we got cancelled at the 7th second, then we took a little bit of time to die, then we're respawning. If you're going to be late to lane because of something like that, always buy a tier 2 boots. You know, if I succeeded with my recall there and I didn't get killed by Viego, I would have absolutely just bought, you know, Amptome. I always say this, when you're versing melee champions, feel free to just buy full damage. Don't buy boots because you're not going to kite them, right? They're going to dash on you and you're going to stand still and you want to hold your ground. That's how you should play against uh, uh, melee champions on Azir. You know, against Syndra, against Ori, yeah, then the tier 2 boots are important because you know there's value out of dodging their abilities but against Zed you know there's nothing to dodge really like he's going to hit you with one shuriken you can always dodge the other or if you have enough amp tones you can just dash into him and tank it and still win the trade 
Um, and here it's very, very important, guys. Whenever you guys are going for plates and you know that your lane is coming, make sure that your camera is not centered. You can see how the majority of my screen is watching these two entrances, and I'm positioning myself away from the threat. I'm standing away from the threat, and I'm putting all of my attention towards where he could be coming from so that I can make sure that, you know, um, I don't take any free damage and I could also chunk him in return. Another good thing, you know, when you're versing champions like Akali, like Zed, uh, they will always appear behind you after ulting. And you have to, you know, during his ult animation, you have to put a soldier to the side. So you have to put a soldier to the left or to the right and do this this uh, shuffle angle like this or like this. Because if you just try to put a soldier behind you and shuffle in a straight line, He's going to body block you, and your E's like a 20 second cooldown, he's on top of you, you're death marked, you're dead. Uh, so that's that's kind of like a little Azir thing, you know, just just making sure you get the angles just right. Uh, if you know you're about to get all in, and uh, playing, you know, posturing pretty aggressively there, just trying to bait out the shadow. You know, I'm never committing there, always keeping in mind, okay, he could go back to his shadow. The most important thing here, guys, is whenever you're, you, you pretty much have a guaranteed kill on your laner, don't try to chaos it. Don't worry about securing the kill. Like, yes, it's nice to get the gold for us, but what's most important is that we're here and we're able to push this wave out in time. Now, our Viego wants us to help him. We absolutely should never help our Viego. We should just focus on pushing this wave first because if we go to our Viego and we try to help him, by the time we get back to mid lane, whether we kill everyone here or we die, by the time we get back to mid lane, our lane has returned. The Zed is back with items spent, with full HP, with full mana, and we're never going to be able to get a, a, a successful recall off. So it's important that first of all, you always shove your lane. If you've killed your laner in a skirmish, before you go to the objective, before you contribute to, you know, or you go to another room, whatever it is, before you do double turns, you push out your waves. All right, you push out your wave, and then instead of recalling, you could kind of, like I did, you know, I'm going to recall in this, in this bush with a pink, but oh, look, there's something happening in river. I'm just going to walk up a couple of seconds and see if there's anything to be done so we didn't delay our recall too much um we were able to contribute a little bit and most importantly we were able to get a good base timer off i think that's what's really important about azir because you don't really have mana on azir in the early game you can't really afford to spam your abilities uh, if you take a bad base if you're on a freeze it's very very hard to unfreeze um so yeah, just keep that in mind. Be selfish. You are Azir. You know, you are the main carry, the main character. We see that there was a play bot, you know, Zed Roam bot, but it looks like he's leaving. So I thought, okay, I might just secure the plate for myself and just guarantee that I get something from the Roam. But then I see he's come back and he, he, he's gone for round two for some reason. And we get very greedy here. We actually stick around for another plate. Um, and we're, we're a little bit late to this play. I think generally when you think about following Roams, if the play is happening past your tier one tower, anywhere here on the map, don't worry about following it. Just get the plates, uh, get, a, get a CS lead for yourself. But if they ever go between your tier one and tier two, always commit to the room guys, always punish them for this. And you can see here, I'm trying to max out as many Conqueror stacks as I can with just my W. Uh, before I ult, right? And then before I WEQ, because your ult and your WEQ are like the highest AP ratio abilities that you have. And uh, if you can stack up a lot of Conqueror stacks with your autos first, that's going to do way more damage because you only get one rotation of your ult. You only get one rotation um, of your E in a team fight or in a skirmish like that. And, uh, you know, my AD walks mid here, so I'm thinking, okay, I'm just going to push one extra wave. But it's very, very important, guys. If you're about to swap back to mid lane, do not ever greed for this plate. Because if you greed for this plate, there's a very high chance that their support will, will be back from base and they will try to stop you uh, from recalling. And then you're going to be stuck in this lane on me too. And it's just going to be very, very hard to find an optimal window to swap back. So if you made a successful play on the side lane and you have to push an extra wave to fix... The wave state right to make sure it crashes and bounces back never ever greed for the plate early game always just leave the plate be prioritize your tempo prioritize your time and get back to mid lane asap um and look we're back to the lane that we wanted we've got our nashas this is probably the strongest point uh, for azir in the early game when you complete that nashas tooth uh now you really have kill threat on anybody in the game and uh, you know we're constantly trying to refresh the information we see that our lulu is getting chased and then we just ask ourselves look is it realistic for us to get a kill there it's probably not so we're not going to bother and you know as soon as zed does his uh does his combo um we're comfortably going to be dashing in we've got our exhaust so we're not too worried about it and uh, we do get juked out a little bit here. This was actually unfortunate. I should have just walked to his tower here because I know that if he just leaves this way, then he drops this full wave, right? And he, he also drops uh, a plating there. Uh, but I think at this point, we're just so fed that it doesn't really matter. Um, even if we didn't play that skirmish correctly, if we didn't play that 1v1 correctly, uh, he comes back. He just doesn't expect the amount of damage that we have. That, that's the nice thing about Conqueror, guys. With you know, Nash's Tooth Conqueror, people don't expect how strong you are because it gives you a lot of AP, right? And it also gives you a little bit of healing towards the end. And uh, we do a nice outplay on the Zin Zhao here, you can see. I actually flashed 
before he landed, because if we didn't immediately flash to get the last W auto in, we might have been out of range um, of the Zinzowl, and uh, we wouldn't do any damage to him, and then maybe he flashes away, and again, if we flash after that, we're not going to do any damage because he has a Zinzao ult. So it's important that, you know, when you're versing Zinzao, you just kind of flash on top of him if he's not too fed and uh, kill him before he can actually uh, abuse his ultimate. So the game's gone very, very well for us. We're very, very fed. Uh, I think rarely do you ever get this type of game state on Azir. Uh, but I'd say if you do play the full damage the DPS built with Conqueror, with just uh, Nash's Shadow Flame, Death Cap, uh, you will have this more often. You know, this kind of uh, condition, this kind of scoreline in the game, because you do a lot more damage and there's more kill opportunities. Now, I would say second item, if you're solo AP, I mean, this game I'm not solo AP, but in general, I think Shadow Flame is a really underrated item on Azir. I'm not sure why it's not built more often, because the thing about Shadow Flame, guys, is it gives you 20%... Um, 20% increase um, when people are below a certain amount of health, right? Your, your attacks crit, but it's actually increased to 30% for DOT, so damage over time, and pet effects. Okay, now Azir doesn't have any DOTs, but Azir W is considered a pet. Your soldiers are your pets, so your, your W does the full 30% extra damage from Shadow Flame, right? So uh, if you think about other champions that build Shadow Flame, like, you know, Diana, Silas, um, Akali, those chaps, they don't have any pets, and they don't have any DOT effect, and they still build the, build the item, because it's just a good item. But on Azir, like, you literally get more gold value from Shadow Flame than those other champs, and if they build it, why don't you? You know, I think the only reason you shouldn't build a uh, Shadow Flame on Azir is if, you know, they have a lot of tanks, and you need that percent burn from the Andres. But if you don't, if they have a lot of squishy champions, like in this game, you know, their only tank is Zin Zhao, who's like an off tank, I guess. He's not really a full tank, and uh, yeah, Shadow Flame's a really great item in most games. Now here, we have a 1,000 gold bounty, okay? We have a 700 bounty and 300 for the kill, so it's really important that we don't flip the game. This is the worst thing you can do when you have a massive bounty, because even if this is a two for one, it's not worth it. Like, we are literally worth three kills right now. We were worth three kills there, and if we just stayed full health, and if we just kept poking Zed on the tower, eventually we would chip away at this tower and we would get it, you know? Yes, maybe we get half a plate this wave, then half a plate the next wave, then, you know, and then kill the tower on the third wave, but the Zed has no way to win this lane. The only way for us to lose here is to try and force the kill too quickly. Try and outplay and, and dash in and do some old combo and get a double kill. Who cares about the double kill? We are already strong enough to get this tower and we want to get the objective. All we need is patience. Patience, chip away at it one wave at a time. Make sure our E does not go on cooldown. Put a soldier behind ourselves when we walk up to the tower to hit the tower. And we will absolutely get this mid tower. You know, we'll get this mid tower and then we can we can roam to the side lane and do the same thing bot or do the same thing top. So yeah, whenever you get a really, really good game like this, whenever you're the main carry, you're not allowed to, to throw away your streak. Because this streak not only affects my lane, but it also affects my teammates because now um, you know, if this is in Zhao or, or the Zed goes to the side lane, suddenly he's a thousand gold, a thousand gold richer, and uh, he might have kill threshold on my teammates, whereas otherwise he wouldn't. So I'm, I'm, I'm basically griefing my team by doing that, and uh, that's okay. Uh, when, when the enemy tower is about to die, you can look to dash in like that as well, right? Because uh, they're not going to respect it, respect you while the tower is still alive. So you can kind of catch them off guard there a little bit. Uh, we tried to contribute to our Lulu, but didn't realize how low HP she actually was. Uh, so we're just, uh, we're just comfortably kind of staying mid lane, inviting this 1v1. That's the nice thing about taking exhaust here is that, you know, we feel very, very comfortable. We know that even if he ults us here, uh, we can exhaust him. Now, I'm not sure what I did there. I, I, I just ulted way too late. I didn't ult as he came out of his ultimate, but even if I did try to time it perfectly, he already planted his W down, so he can always jump back to his W there. Um, so I think just a bit of a, a bit of a mistake there. I'm not used to playing with exhaust, and I just... Yeah, just should have just exhausted him straight away, right? Yeah, I put the put the W where he he was originally from in case he tries to run away. I chuck the exhaust on him. You know, if he's not gonna die to me, then he's gonna die to the tower. It's it's just a bit of a mis-execution there, but it's okay. Our job is done. Our job was to take the mid tower, and now our job is to impact the rest of the map. We ping out Lucian. We say, hey, uh, look. Uh, the, the bot tower's gone, so I should probably be side laning now. Um, I can make more progress done 1v1 one one on the side lane uh, than my Lucian can. My Lulu very kindly pulls the wave. I, I remember I was thinking in game, wow, like these guys really want me to carry. You know, they're, they're nice enough that they don't even tax this wave. Uh, most people would, and that's a bit of a lag spike there. Welcome to Australia. Um, lovely country. Uh, not great internet. That's uh, what we're proud of. 
And yeah, you know, when you're this fed, just don't don't feel don't feel uncomfortable side laning. We just know as long as you don't use your E, you know, just always be ready to to just dash out. If you have your E on a Z, you're very very safe on the side lanes. You know, once you have that tower up, you can comfortably one v two or even one v three. And it's important that when you're you know when you're winning, you don't just slow the game down. Like yes, a Z outscales Z, a Z outscales Kennen, but. We're so fed that we shouldn't be happy with just going even. We should be getting structures across the map. We should be getting objectives because we are so far ahead. And uh, just kind of keeping our eyes on our map all the time here, thinking about, okay, who can really kill us? And uh, in my head, uh, if it's Zin Zhao Zed, they can probably kill us. If it's uh, Zed plus any other champion, they probably can't kill us. So that's the only thing we have to worry about. You know, is Zin Zhao here? Is Zin Zhao not? Now here, obviously just a bad ultimate from me. Whenever you're in that position, whenever you're close to a wall on a Zia, make sure that you always ult people into the wall. Don't ult them away. Don't ult them to the right or to the left. Ult them into the wall because they can often get stuck or at least kind of bugged out for half a second and that extends your stun. And that extra half a second there, if I threw him into the bot wall, if I threw him down, then uh, yeah, that would have just given me an extra soldier auto, right? And he would have died there. So a little bit of mis-execution, a bit of rust on the Azir. But what's important is, again, we went bot lane because we wanted to progress the game. We wanted to take the bot tower. It's done. We've done exactly what we came here for. The next objective is Rift Herald. We do not have teleport. Excuse me. So we want to contribute to our teammates at the Rift. We want our teammates to start the Rift. We're going to walk mid to get the mid prior. And realistically, we need Viega to already be starting to hit the Rift Herald. Now, the best case scenario here is our Kale should have actually walked bot lane because she is the, the more useless champion. Um, and it should be me hitting the top tower because I have agency 1v1. Unfortunately, my kill did not go bot lane. Here, my Lucian should just be taking this wave. Like, I should not be stealing this wave of farm from my Lucian. Um, but I did because uh, I'm a pig, so I apologize for that. And uh, you can see my Kale is getting solo killed by the cannon. If I was top lane right now, I would have solo killed the cannon myself. And this is what stalls out the, 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 the game. This is the problem with wrong lane assignments, right? Like, if you don't put your strong player in the strong side of the map, then the strong side of the map can't make any progress because the wave dies, and now we can't dive. And this was complete bullshit. I just want you to look at that. What is that? That is just Azir things right there. Um, let's look at that player. Let's look at look at my look at my Q here. What is that? Let's have a look at that together, guys. So I just tunnel so hard in this cannon, but surely that Q hits him. Look at that soldier. Surely that should hit him here, but it actually does not hit him. And then for some reason, it doesn't let me auto him. This is just like the worst. Look, it's right on top of him. I can see it's literally on top of him. It's it's he he's in range to get auto. But for whatever reason, I'm clicking on him and it's just it just didn't let me auto him. Not sure why. Not sure what really happened there. Um, and then I got chain CC'd by Zin Zhao. I didn't realize I was taking aggro. It was just kind of a comedy of errors. A very, very bad play. Um, you know, definitely. Uh, Tunnel vision, and you can, you can, again, you can access that mechanically. That that shouldn't go that badly because I should value my life more. Even if that uh, Q doesn't hit cannon, you know, I can still ult the Zin Zhao away instantly and W E out of the tower. But the most important thing there, guys, why that why that whole situation happened is because my kill was top. That's it. That's the only thing that matters. Is the kill should never have been top, and we should have just pinged our kill back. I felt uncomfortable. You know, I felt like. Look, the guy's already having a bad game. I don't want to ping him back off the way because he's going to feel like, you know, I'm, I'm being mean to him. Like, I, I felt bad. That's why I didn't ping the Kale back because I just didn't want to, you know, boss him around because he's having a bad game. I didn't want to make him feel even more bad. But that, like, that insecurity from me cost us that whole that whole sequence, you know? It, just because I was in the wrong lane, just because I was mid lane, and I don't need to be mid lane because I don't have a mid tower, right? They, what, what's the reason to send four people mid? You send four people mid if you need mid prior. If you need a secure mid prior. Well, guess what? When the enemy team doesn't have a mid tower and you've got a Lucian, they can't get prior because the Lucian will just kill them, right? So, um, yeah, just kind of bad bad allocation of resources, bad lane assignments, and then bad, you know, bad, ex bad execution to end it as well. Yeah, we could have absolutely salvaged that with better execution towards the end, but now we're finally in the correct lane. We're finally pushing the right tower we get the free gold we're feeling very very good our jungle is playing around us so props to our jungler for playing towards the you know the strong side lane if you're playing jungle always look at okay which one of my side is stronger and then i'll uh you know i'll play towards that guy not really sure why i'm riding this rift to be honest with you um but i did for fun i guess and we see that there's a few people flanking us now, but we do have that Azir tower. This is what I mean about side laning. It's great for Azir because you can bait people in. They think they've got a flank on you, but in reality, you're flanking them because you've got a tower where they think that you don't have a tower. This is Zao did a lot of damage. It was a very late exhaust for me. I just assumed that 1v4, I would be able to kill him without actually casting our exhaust. Um, but again, what do we come here to do, guys? We came here to get the top tower. The job is done. 
there's nothing else realistic for us to get. So even though our teammates are fighting here, we're just going to finish our reset. We know that we've got all the gold we can, the maximum amount of gold that we could from this side of the map. And uh, we're out of there. We're not going to walk towards that side of the map again. Um... Well, at least we're going to buy our death cap. So we're very, very strong now. Now, this is the point in the game on Azir where you can actually try to force stuff mid. Uh, just because you've got your full build, your three items, right? You've got your Nashes, you've got your Shadow Flame, you've got death cap. Uh, it's pretty much as strong as you'll ever be against most of the champions. Obviously, against uh, Zen Zhao, I'll be a little bit stronger once I get, uh, you know, more uh, well, avoid stuff. Uh, but against the rest of the champs, I can pretty much one-shot them. Uh, so I feel like there's nothing for me to really do top here. I kind of want to push mid, play for this mid tower, play for the blue buff, right? And again, we go back to that strong side weak side argument right now Viego should be playing for their blue buff and uh, the way that I just played here was as if my Viego was near me which he wasn't and uh, I mean we're just very lucky that uh, we're very lucky that we're fed uh, that was just a bad play I saw that Kenum walked through mid I assumed that Kenum would, would end up being bot lane but he actually stayed behind the Jinx and uh, yeah we got punished we got punished for uh, not respecting that Kenum could be there and then we all just died and, uh, that comes down to two things. One, my Viego was on the wrong side, but two, I can see on my map that my Viego is on the wrong side, so I just shouldn't walk forward. That was just a really bad play to go for, and uh, yeah, a huge momentum swing uh, towards the enemy team. I assume they'll be able to get Baron here, and uh, that was the strongest point that will ever be, like I said on Azir, you know, before anybody else has magic resist, you've already got your death cap, you've got 500 AP, um, it does not get easier than that in terms of fights. Like if you had a 5v5 fight, that's probably the easiest 5v5 would ever have. Uh, but it is what it is, you know, we still have the late game. We obviously have Lulu, Kale, um, Azir, great combo. Uh, very strong champs together, so we just have to be a little bit more respectful now. I understand that, look, uh, it's not a free win. My teammates aren't doing great. I am the main carry, and... Uh, you know, in part, that is because my team have set me up, so props to them. So, uh, you know, if you start throwing games like this, make sure you don't blame your team, because part of the reason why you're this fed is your teammates, you know, giving you waves, uh, you know, roaming, ganky, whatever it is that they've done to help you. So it is your job, it is your responsibility to carry from this position. If you don't carry and you lose this game, it is your fault. Even though your KD will still look good, it is your fault. And at this point, you know, I see that they have position over the Drake. I know that they're going to have mid prior with Baron. Don't contest the objective. If you think that the objective is too hard to contest, give it up. It doesn't matter that we were winning super hard a couple minutes ago. Um, yeah, just play the opposite side, trade some farm, trade some gold. But make sure you don't get caught. You can see how I'm trying to stay out of vision. I'm not sure where Zin Zhao is. Um, that's a really, really crucial part of the game because uh, I can die to, to Zed Zin Zhao, absolutely can. So uh, we just have to be a little bit more respectful here. Uh, we are still fed though, and uh, that was very, very nice for us. I think in general, it was, yeah, if you could set up your soldiers first, and then ult somebody into your soldiers like that. Um, you get a lot of autos off while they're still airborne. And even if it's a slippery champion like Zed, they can't really get away from you again. This was a little bit of poor execution. I didn't really use my E damage. I didn't really use my shield. Then I got hit by the Jinx ult. Just unexpected damage there. I was trying to bait for my tower. But that's one downside of obviously a tower. Is it has been buffed in terms of how fast it actually appears and starts hitting. But it's still quite slow. You know, It still takes a couple of seconds from when you cast it before it starts autoing. Um, but again, why is that a good death, guys? One, they had Baron, and they came towards us, and they wasted their Baron on killing us, which is fine. Like, you know, if they want to spend their Baron on, uh, uh, on killing an Azir and not take any structures, by all means. But the most important thing is that we secure the tower, right? We secure the tower that we came here for, we got the waves, and, uh, you know, we got, a, we got a one for one, and we stole out the Baron. So that's a really great sequence for us. That's very, very good for our game. Uh, at this point, I mean, we've got Void stuff. It pretty much doesn't get better better than better than this. So at this point, what we want to do is we just want to walk to side lanes. We want to fix our side lanes if we need to. Um, otherwise, we just go mid. Like, you should just go mid and ping your teammates mid. Do not split push when you are this strong on Azir. The best thing you can do is just walk mid and team fight. Because even if you're down a player mid, um, as long as you have the right position, as long as you're playing front to back, it is very, very easy to win. And uh, you have to push the lead while you have this massive item lead, while people don't have uh, the correct itemization to stop you. And yeah, if your team are just going in the wrong direction, again, just be assertive. You know, I know that we should be mid. I'm pinging us to go mid. I know that my Lucian's too far away. My Lucian greeted for an extra wave. He's not on the same tempo line. It, it doesn't matter. I, I, this is the strongest part of the game for my champion, and I'm forcing this mid play, whether my teammates like it or not. And that, that's kind of how you have to be on Azir, and that's the great thing about the champion. He has a lot of, uh, you know, engaged tool, a very decisive champion to play. Uh, you know, I'm not afraid for Zin Zhao to go on me. I really do want Zin Zhao to go on me, and again, we did that thing that we did mid, where we dash on top of Zin Zhao after ulting him away, just to make sure that the, the ult doesn't uh, protect him from us. 
And uh, we ended up getting two kills and they're fighting under our tower. It could have gone better for sure. Obviously, you have to keep in mind this was a 5v4. Our KO already died uh, on the side lane beforehand. This was a little bit funny. Uh, the million <laughs> just, uh, just walked in and I'm like, goodness me, I'm losing to this guy. Um, so that kind of, you know, it was a bit of a snapback to reality. After seeing that million play, I had to hold myself accountable. You know, I said, if that guy's going to do that, then he does not deserve to win. So that was a, a bit of a breath of life. For me, I felt I felt more motivated to win after seeing that play from him. And uh, yeah, look, I, we again we did the correct thing. What's the most important thing, guys? We walked mid, we got the mid tower again. Even though we died, we cleared the wave. There is no trade for them. You know, we got closer to our next item, closer to our full build. We're abusing our power spike while we're strong, and we're getting structures. Every single past death that we've had, in the past couple of deaths, every single time we've died, we have do not, we have done so after securing a structure, and that should be your goal in this year. You go push a tower, put a tower up, and then just fight till you die. All right, get as much gold as you can. Who cares if you die as long as your base doesn't fall, right? As long as you don't you lose any uh, major objectives. Uh, gold on you is always going to be more important than gold on their champions. So. Um, again, at this point, I, I, when you have a great team fight comps like this with you know front to back, uh, enchanter support, lots of scaling, just look to fight. It doesn't matter who on, like just go forward. It doesn't matter if it's support or jungle. Whoever you find on Azir, you are so much stronger than every other champion in the game because you're higher level. You know you've got just outright you're just a stronger champion. And if there's nothing to do mid, wh where would you go, guys? Where do you think is the easiest objective on the map right now? It's this, right? It's the only outer tower standing. Sieging the base is very difficult because we could get flanked by the cannon. That is the only way that we can lose. So make sure that you don't siege the inhib towers unless you have Baron. That's a very big, very crucial part. Uh, it doesn't really matter what champion you play, but you know, with Azir, it's, it's also important because uh, if people run at you when you play Azir, very easy to disengage with your ult because not only does it knock people back, it literally creates a wall in front of you that people can't walk past. Um, so just make sure that you... Um, and don't open yourself up to flank angles because that's often the only way you can lose the game. Um, and just feel free to take skirmishes. You know, your poke does a surprising amount of damage on Azir. Once you get void stuff, uh, just, just a Q with a couple of autos usually is enough. Now here again, uh, no exhausts used on him. Uh, he walked out of range. It was just way too late for me to exhaust him. So, just again, poor execution. I think it's just because I don't usually run exhaust. I would most of the time run TP. Um... So I'm just not really used to, to using that uh, that summoner spell. Definitely my bad there. Uh, but I think the position was correct. I should absolutely stay bot lane. I should absolutely play for this bot tower. And if I just execute at uh, even slightly below the average level, if I just don't execute awfully, we always get that bot tower and, and we can walk away and we can put our Azir tower down and feel very, very safe. And here it's important, guys. After you die, these people, they're very occupied with things on their screen. They're thinking about ability usage. They're thinking about what's the threat on them. Who can they kill? They're not thinking about the macro. So if you're the one dead, all right, if you're in the death realm, in the death chamber, make sure that you communicate to your team what you think is the correct play. I know that, look, we have 26 kills. 16 of our kills are on me, and I am dead. We are not winning that 4v4. It's just not possible. Even if we execute like gods, we cannot win that 4v4. It is such a low percentage play. And uh, it's important that you, you know, you ping your team back then. Make sure they don't chain feed, right? Make sure that they're not actually, uh, they're not, not actually all dying. This Kale just deserves to be reported for this play. He's an absolute pig. Obviously that Baron's gone. As soon as he decides to go for that bot wave, the Baron is gone. And that's okay. Uh, what's important is, guys, remember, our champion is good at front to back. What are we going to do? We're going to walk mid and we're going to play a front to back. Okay, even though you're down a player on Azir, this is the great thing about this champ. You can always salvage your teammates' mistakes by just playing better on teamfights. And you can see that that's exactly how you play the Conqueror Azir. You want to just auto people with your W until you get full conk stacks and then you're sweet and it's important that you you know you target the right people just think about who does the most damage to me in that fight the person that dealt the most damage to me was obviously zed zed jinx and then zin Zhao. you know those are the three the three targets you should be thinking about you know the zed went on my teammate so as soon as zed didn't go on me i kind of ignored zed and i focused on the jinx because that's the only threat on me then we focused on the zed then we focused on the zin and it was a nice easy cleanup from just you know, correct target prioritiz prioritization. And that's the reason why you should pick as the end solo queue is no matter how badly your teammates play or if people get picked off, you can win 3v5s, 4v5s. You can absolutely win that on Azir once you get some items. The hardest part is the laning. And that's why I enjoy the Conqueror page because you can absolutely have a lot of agency in lane and snowball games just like I did in this one.